Welcome everyone to the Built Green webinar, Water Efficiency and Performance Systems. Um, we are gonna get started here. So just to bring in some context into why we're holding this, um, in the Built Green 2021 New Construction Checklist, um, there were updates to all of the site and water requirements for all star levels associated with the New Construction Checklist. Um, both in our multifamily pro uh, program and our single family. Um, it is looking, this webinar is primarily looking at the credit related to occupant water use reduction, um, which is a combination of water conservation looking at indoor and outdoor water use as a whole. Um, and like energy, there are now two ways to demonstrate water conservation strategies. Um, using both a modeled performance and prescriptive credit strategies, just like our energy efficiency portion that people are familiar with. If you would like to, to dive more into these, um, our handbooks are available on our website, builtgreen.net, and you can look at these credits more in depthly. But we'll be going through um, just some upper level details on these right now. So why did we introduce um, the water performance pathways um, rather than just keeping the prescriptive credits that everyone was familiar with? Well, one, it increased accuracy of water reductions calculating and reporting for our program as well as for your own projects, um, rather than just looking at are we reducing it using different strategies, this is actually giving us an actual metric we can then um, report out to both you and the community at large. Um, and then furthermore, because we have those numbers, Bill Green can leverage those savings from water use um, and your design strategies to advocate for more valuable green building incentives for builders from jurisdictions who have climate goals around water reductions with actual targets in mind. Um, furthermore, for you specifically as builders um, or for developers, um, this allows you to effectively communicate utility savings to potential tenants and buyers, as well as um, occupants can be more informed on expected costs of living. Um, so going into what the new checklists require, um, the water conservation requirements are as follows. Uh, the minimum occupant reduction requirements per star level. So at three star, you're looking at a water reduction target of 30%, um, or you're looking at um, using another certification program, which is what we're here to talk about. So WERS and WRI, you will need to score um, a 70 or less through their programs, or you can achieve WaterSense 2.0 certification to meet the three star requirement. At four star, we're upping this to 40% reduction or a score of 60% or less. WaterSense 2.0 is no longer approved at this star level to be used for to meet that requirement. You can still get it and you can get points for it, but um, it won't be the, the sole pathway you can take. At five star, it um, increases to a reduction of 50% um, with a WERS or WRI score of 50 or less. Our Emerald Star, which was not a part of the 2021 update, um, does require still um, a reduction of at least 70% from a 67 gallon per person per day baseline. This is slightly different than the other star levels, um, and this does require the use of a performance modeling pathway. There are no prescriptive options. So what does the getting into just looking at the performance pathway, which is what we're here to talk about. This is how it lays out in terms of the actual pathway and the points that you're going to get. So if you're a three star um, project and you're doing single family, it is credit 2-51. In multifamily, it's credit 2-39. And you can see that the points awarded um, here is, it's broken up by single family versus multifamily because they do get different points on those different checklists, but you can see which pathways are allowed at which star levels and which options you have in terms of um, that performance metric. Now in multifamily, um, there is no, 
built green uh, worksheet, which is what you'll see in single family, which is a worksheet uh, model that was um, utilizing a worksheet that built green designed as well as some other tools through the EPA and the Washington Dis Department of Ecology. Um, but those are not available on multifamily. So if you do go the modeling pathway in multifamily, you will only be using a third party um, certification to achieve that modeling pathway. Um, one thing to note, as you'll see uh, on the points awarded, they do escalate and they do get you very close to what you need in a minimum uh, requirement for that site and water point requirement. So for those not familiar with the checklist as much, um, for reference in three star, you need um, 40 points uh, minimum in the site and water category, which this is the credit within that, cat, that section. Um, in four star, you need 60. Uh, and then in five star, you need um, 90. And so these modeling pathways, because this is such a, a, a large amount of the performance of the site, um, you, these modeling pathways do get you very close to at least that minimum threshold, and that's sort of by design. One other note to um, make is that uh, also in Emerald Star, there are no points awarded because it doesn't use a point system. So if you're not familiar with Emerald Star, that's why it doesn't say it's applicable. Um, more points will be awarded for the use of performance modeling pathway over doing the prescriptive credits. And that is by design. That is so that we can encourage you to take that extra step to go that extra pathway, that extra modeling um, performance and that the effort it takes to do that. So we specifically wanted to enhance and encourage that through adding more points to these versus the prescriptive credits that you would achieve for the same performance at that minimum threshold. And um, with that, we are going to transition into the main portion of our um, webinar and start looking at these different systems. The first will be uh, WERS or WERS. The second will be WRI. And the, the last will follow up with WaterSense 2.0. Um, this will be an extended webinar. Um, it runs until about 1.30, so just be aware of that. It is being recorded and will be posted about a week after this event. And with that, I will hand it to you, Mike. Thank you. Great, thank you, Sonia. And uh, I hit share my screen. I believe you can see it now. Thumbs up if uh, you can see it. No, I cannot see it yet, Mike. Okay, sorry about that. Hold on. Here we go. Now. <laughs> there you are. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Sonia. Thank you for the time. Uh, thank you for the ability to speak to your audience. Uh, so WERS is one of the water efficiency performance paths that was added to the Bill Green program about a year ago. Um, and I'll give a quick introduction to myself. My name is Mike Kalignan. I'm the executive director of the Green Builder Coalition. The Green Builder Coalition administers the WERS or Water Efficiency Rating Score program. I'm also the uh, chair of the WERS Development Group. And so I'm here today to kind of give you a little bit of an overview of what it is. And so if we can advance the slide, there we go. All right, so let's first talk about what it is, okay? Water Efficiency Rating Score is applicable to new or existing single family or multifamily residential properties. It is a performance path that allows you to project water usage over three different time horizons, but it also spits out a score, as you see on your screen, from zero to 100. The easiest way to remember this is either like an energy rating, or if you're not familiar with energy ratings, think of it like golf, lower is better. So what you can do is you can then kind of compare properties uh, in similar locales and say, okay, if one's got a 50, one's got a 70, we already know which one is more efficient. It's the 50 because lower is better. The other thing about uh, WERS is that it is a third-party verification program. 
So this is not uh, uh, the builder filling up the form himself or herself and then saying, okay, this looks great, or the architect. Uh, this is someone who is not involved with the project, but who has come there on an independent and objective basis to assess the property. And I keep using the word property because this looks at everything from the lot line in. This is not just from the envelope in. This is the entire property. A quick look at the timeline of the uh, of the program itself. Um, so basically we formed the development group in February of 2014. So we've been at this a little over eight years now. Um, I'm not going to read all this. Uh, I'm assuming you all are literate and can read yourself, and it's also recorded, so you'll be able to go back and look at it later if you want to. But you can see that we've been accomplishing a number of things, getting into a number of green building programs, a number of regulations as well, or codes. Um, and uh, we anticipate this year uh, full approval within Water Sense for Homes 2.0. Right now, we have an agreement in principle. Um, and what they're looking at is a score of 67 or lower to achieve that third party uh, uh, compliance with Water Sense for Homes 2.0, which you'll hear more about from Olga in a little bit. Um, but I wanted to get to, before we, we get into like some of the details, some of you might be sitting there going, why? Why, why do I even care about this? And there's the easy answer, which is if you don't have water, you really don't have growth. If you don't have growth, then all of a sudden the building industry doesn't look so good. But that is kind of a high level existential kind of answer. So really the question is, what is your why? Why do you care or why should you care? So I was told that there's builders here, there are raiders here. So I kind of want to hit on the whys for both of you. So if you are a builder, why would you care? Well, to me, WERS is, is a lot about flexibility not just the way it's implemented. We talked before about it can be in a green building program, it can be in a code, it can be in a financial incentive. That's a flexible way to implement it, but from your perspective, it's flexible in that it allows you design freedom, product choice. You don't have to follow a prescriptive list and say, oh, I have to use this, yes or no. It gives you some latitude. And that can really help you when you're trying to satisfy your customers who maybe, and I, I make this joke often, but they want the Brazilian rainforest experience in their shower, well, that's not going to fly with water sense. And I understand why, and that's fine. But if they do want that, how do you how do you make that happen and still have a water efficient property? Well, you capture all the rain, for instance, or you use a gray water system, or you take some other kind of measures to ultimately reduce the water usage and still provide that kind of experience for your customer. Now, there's another thing here too, and that is it can give you a marketing advantage. It really depends upon your competition. Um, are they positioning themselves as a more green or environmental builder or not? And maybe if they are, maybe they're just looking at it from an energy perspective and not a holistic perspective. So there's a marketing advantage there. Now, the flip side of that coin is good PR because you can say, well, you know, yes, I've got that advantage over somebody else, but also look at it as, what does it look, how does it reflect on you if you're not doing it? So you're not getting bad PR because it's, oh, you don't care about uh, this precious resource that we all need. So it, there's kind of the two-edged sword there. As Sonia talked about five-star achievement, you can get it anywhere from three to five-star on, uh, on the performance path. So those are some of the things of why for the builder side. Now for the raiders, oh, sorry, I skipped one. It could be cost neutral. We're gonna get into costs in just a little bit, and we're gonna also get into some things that will offset those costs potentially. So instead of you sitting there, oh, it's another expense or oh, whatever, just stick with me because I've got some information later on, not just cost, but also why you can get some of these offset. So from the raider perspective, there we go, now we're raider. For you, it's just another service offering, which means potentially more revenue for you. The cool thing is, is if you're already out on the site anyway, then it's a matter of whoops, convenience. Okay. Now you say, oh yeah, but then that's not a trip charge I can I can you know rack up for later. True, 
But you can also use that to your advantage when you're working with your builder customers or your potential builder customers. You can say, hey, I can do a couple of these services all at the same trip. It'll save you a little bit on the trip charge, but then you pick it up on the hourly uh, work that you're doing. And finally, that marketing advantage again. If you're competing out there with other raters, but those other raters maybe only do one or two things, and this is something you can add now, you can say, hey, I've got, I've got the ability to do lots of different ratings and lots of different verifications and inspections that can give you an advantage compared to your competitors. Now, let's get into what WERS looks for, how to do it. Um, this is gonna be very quick because uh, the actual training itself as we'll get into is, is much more lengthy than this. But what do we look at? We look at everything, really. From the lot line in, we're looking at everything and anything that uses water. We may not always have an efficiency benchmark for some of those things, but we can at least quantify it and, and make it be a one-to-one -one between the reference home and the design home. So we wanna make sure we take it all into consideration. And this is really critical for utilities because we talk about energy efficiency a lot, right? And you can put some more solar panels up and you can produce more energy. That's great. I haven't figured out a way to turn up a river yet. So from a utilities perspective, the water is super important as far as like knowing exactly. It's it, especially out west um, where you have water rights issues. Maybe you can't pull more water. And so you have to be pretty precise when it comes to water. So we look at all these things. We quantify all of it. Those are the inputs, the outputs, like I said before, that score, but also the projected water usage daily, monthly, and yearly. And I don't have it on this slide, but it is important, and Sonia talked about this earlier, uh, gallons per capita per day, we also have that projection as well. So those are things that, this, that the words tool will spit out based on the inputs you put in. And from existing homes, what it does, it says, okay, what's there now? And then what do you want to do? And then it'll compare the delta between what you have and then what you want to want to change things to. To give you a quick glimpse of just what this looks like, this is a portion of the rating report. If you could see above this, it would it breaks down indoor use and outdoor use. But I just put this part in here. The words tool is Excel based. Um, it's an intricately designed and programmed, but this is a part of the rating report, and you can kind of see how it breaks down. Also, we put in billing rates, so you, you figure out what your financial costs are for your water. And then also, you put on there, your uh, you get a, a score. We have it broken down where you can look at it as no reuse and reuse. So there's there's different ways that you can kind of quantify what you're doing there. I want to talk a little bit about the certification process. So here's how this works. A verifier chooses a TIC. No, not the little bug that crawls around the forest, but a TIC stands for a Testing, Inspection, and Certification Company. And we have agreements with two, both uh, UL Environment and Intertech. So you choose a TIC and you say, okay, I'm gonna utilize them for QA. I'll come back to them in a little bit, but I'm gonna do my preliminary verification. Um, I'm going to maybe upload that into the portal to have it there, but then I'm going to put the final when I go back and do the final, because the preliminary is going to be on plans and drawings, designs, that sort of thing. The final is going to be, I'm walking around the site. And I can tell you from experience, because I went through the first class, you go around the site, you're doing flow rate testing, you're looking at irrigation systems and vegetation. Um, no, we don't expect you to be a botanist, but we do train you on what to look for. Uh, so you do all that. And then you submit your project to a QC entity, one maybe you maybe already have if you're a raider. Um, or if not, there are other QC entities out there that we can direct you to as far as how to do quality control on the project. And then that gets submitted for QA and certification with one of the ticks that you chose from before. Project goes through, everything's great, flying colors. It receives a certificate from Green Builder Coalition. And then there is an audit process, a QA audit process that is conducted by the TIC or TICs, depending upon if you just choose the same one all the time or if you split it up. And they have their own uh, you know, QA procedures that they 
are are very well known for. Uh, their reputation is is super super high, and it's what they completely base their business on. So they're not messing around. They're going to make sure that things are done right. A little bit about training. So we have in person, and we are launching our online course actually starting tomorrow. Um, so the in person courses again i took the very first one back in 2016 so the verifier course is three days it's going to be both a combination of classroom and field training you do about a day and a half in the classroom a half a day of field training and then day three is exam day and you do a written exam it is computer based it is through a bpi test center um, and then you also do a field exam where you go around and do a mock verification if you don't want to be a verifier, but you want to be a WERS consultant, wait, wait, what's this WERS consultant thing? I didn't say anything about that. Well, a WERS consultant is someone who can become involved with the design team, who can provide recommendations on product choices or design, but they're not going to do any verifications. But if you want to be a WERS consultant, we have a course on that. It's a two-day course. We don't do any field training because you're not doing a verification. And we assume that you have a certain level of knowledge of job sites. But you are going to get classroom training because you're going to have to learn how to use the words tool, how to input things, which I know sounds easy, but believe me, it's not as easy as it sounds. So you go through, you learn about the tool, you learn how to input things, and then on either the verifier or the consultant, there are what we call probationary verifications, kind of like apprentice uh, or uh, you know, apprentice kind of uh, inspections, but it's verifications. You can do them from plans. Um, and that's just to make sure that we know you understand the process. So those are part of, uh, of, of the training process. Here's some of the information for the online courses. Like I said, it, it starts tomorrow. So don't expect to be able to sign up for it because we've already got it ready to go. But the next course, which is to be announced, probably going to be sometime in July, I would think. Um, that's going to be there for the verifier and the consultant course. Um, now, we do have a multifamily course, which we offer both in person and online. Um, I put an asterisk down there by May 11 and 12. The asterisk means that in order to go through the multifamily course, you actually do need to go through either the verifier or consultant course first. It's a prereq for the multifamily course because the multifamily course zeroes in on just multifamily properties and it doesn't go through some of the things that are critical in the verifier or the consultant course. The multifamily course typically is going to follow the verifier and consultant course. So uh, follow it, meaning probably about four or five weeks after. Um, so if the verifier course comes back around in July, we'll probably see the multi multifamily course run in August or early September. Let me give you a quick glimpse of, these are a couple slides from our training. Um, these are some of the things that we are going to train you on and, and teach you about uh, what to look for on uh, the property when you're there. Uh, again, I'm not going to read it all, but this is just a glimpse of, of some of the things that you input into the tool, things that you're looking for. And then also I wanted to quickly show you some of the actual physical tools that you will need to do a verification. Um, some of them are pretty intuitive, um, a couple maybe that you wouldn't think of, but uh, it's not a ton of stuff <laughs> that you need to do a verification. Um, but yet, you know, just a couple things to have in your bag. All right, let's get to cost real quick. So the training I just talked about, um, the verifier training course is going to be $699. For the online um, Santa Fe Community College is that BPI test center I mentioned earlier. They charge $795 when it's in person. However, we can also do in-person training. Like, let's say we have a group that's specific to a certain area. We can just fly in, we can do a training, and those costs can vary. Um, so they could be potentially even lower than what you're seeing on your screen as far as the per person cost. The annual licensing fee for the WERS tool is $349 per year. That does include any and all updates. As I mentioned on an earlier slide, we've updated it 19 times in the past five or six years. So we are constantly working on refining it and improving it. Um, the per project uh, certification fee is $75 for single family. It includes QA and certification. Uh, multifamily costs, it was really, I couldn't put it on here because it depends on how many units there are. It also depends on the uh, 
out, outlying property, the, the landscaping and the, the grounds themselves. So that's a bit of a variable there. Um, so I didn't put that on there, but we do have a cost structure for that. Um, QC, that's going to be whatever you have arranged with your QC entity, assuming that you already have one. And if not, then whatever arrangement you set up with the new QC entity. Um, CEUs, we do require them for our verifiers. Um, it's either four per year or eight every other every two years. Um, we really, really work hard to get free CEU opportunities out to everybody so that we're not making people pay for CEUs. We really don't want people to pay to get their CEUs. So don't worry about any kind of extra CEU costs unless you really want to pay for them. Now, I talked before about how do you offset some of these costs. One of the things that we have set up, which is kind of unique, is the WERS Manufacturer Program. So this isn't meant to be an advertisement for these companies. It's instead meant to show you that there are discounts for water efficient products that can provide some substantial savings to your client or to you. It depends on the, on the parameters that the actual manufacturers have set up to get the discounts. But I mean, if you're looking at 20% off a rainwater or gray water system, I mean, those are gonna run hundreds of dollars. And so that's where, you know, some of this can really get to a cost neutral or even a cost positive situation offsetting the cost of an actual verification. So keep that in mind when you're thinking about, you know, do I really need to do this or do I want to do this or do I want to try this out? Um, it may end up being a positive thing for you or your client. That's what I've got kind of in a relatively quick um, sense there. But I certainly am here to answer questions. Um, I don't see uh, Nina at the moment, but I know that uh, uh, we can certainly take some questions in the remaining time we've got. And I will, there's Nina. All right, I will uh, make myself available now. Is there questions in the chat? So if folks just want to unmute themselves, um, give a couple moments for uh, questions for Mike. Thanks so much for that uh, presentation, Mike. That was great. Yeah, and I, I hope I didn't sound like an auctioneer. I didn't want to try and go too fast, but <laughs> I, I want to want to leave time for my fellow panelists too. So. Oh, great. Well, if there's no questions for Mike, um, I think we can head on to the, our next speaker. Um, so thank you so much, Mike. You can stop sharing your screen. And uh, yeah, we'll go ahead and move on to our, our next presentation. Great, thank you. Great. That's right. Mm -hmm. This is Cindy. <laughs> Cindy Wasser is <laughs> here. She's from the uh, Home Innovation Research Lab. And uh, she's going to talk to you all about the WRI, the Water Rating Index. Cindy. Great. Thanks so much, Mike. I appreciate the introduction. Um, and everyone can see my slides OK? Looks great. Thanks. Cindy. All right. Awesome. So my name is Cindy Wasser. I'm Senior Manager of Green Building Programs at Home Innovation Research Labs. And if you're not familiar with home innovation, we are a nearly 60 year old product testing and certification laboratory that's located just outside DC and Maryland. Our work is solely focused on the home building industry and our corporate mission is to improve the quality, durability, affordability and environmental performance of the nation's housing stock. One of the ways that we live that mission is through our green certification programs. Home Innovation serves as adopting entity for the National Green Building Standard or NGBS. And that means that we set the verification and certification requirements and confer certification when we are confident that the buildings are in compliance. We've certified over 350,000 homes and apartments to date under the NGBS Green Program. We are also recognized by US EPA as a multifamily review organization or MRO for the Energy Star Multifamily New Construction Program as well as a home certification organization or HCO for the Water Sense Labeled Homes Program. To each of these home certification programs, we bring our company's perspective as that credible third party certification body and we also leverage our expertise in residential construction. Today we're talking about our certified WRI offering, which is a new offshoot of our NGPS Green Program. 
So before, you know, to lay the groundwork of what WRI is, let's first talk about the National Green Building Standard. So the NGPS is an above code voluntary green rating system designed to recognize high performance construction across all residential occupancies. The NGPS is an ANSI approved standard, which is a testament to its broad consensus development process that involve builders, manufacturers, code officials, green consultants, and government representatives. The NGPS is recognized as part of the ICC suite of I codes to form a complete and comprehensive set of building codes in the US. And it's also included as an alternative compliance path within the International Green Construction Code, or IGCC, which is a sustainable development overlay code. So I won't go into extensive detail about the NGBS compliance requirements, but what I want you to take away is that the NGBS is a broad, multi-attribute green rating system that's more than just energy efficiency or water efficiency. So in that regard, it's more similar in nature to the Built Green Washington program. As an ANSI standard, the NGPS is subject to regular review and update. The latest version was released in April 2020, and that's the 2020 version. And that's available now, and many people are pursuing that for their green certification program of choice. That 2020 NGPS version included a lot of new updates that reflect expanded scope and new certification opportunities. Um, most important to this audience is the new water efficiency performance path that was added in. So the water rating index methodology is included within the 2020 NGBS as an appendix and it's cited as an option for complying with the NGBS. So I laid all this out because I wanted to kind of show the origin of the WRI um, and the fact that it's part of a consensus development ANSI standard really signals that there were a lot of voices at the table when it was being developed and many people kicking the tires to ensure that the URI is a credible and reliable assessment of home water performance. So a WRI score is an indication of a property's water use. So just as you heard from Mike, we're not just looking at indoors or outdoors, we're looking at all the water being used in the property. Um, it also addresses any water capture and reuse that might be incorporated into the design of the building. Water efficiency is assessed as a single number that's between zero and 100. And oh my gosh, I hope you're not starting a drinking game, you know, trying to track the things that Mike and I said that are going to be very similar. Um, you know, I, you know, just like in golf, uh, lower score is better for WRI. WRI is available for newly constructed buildings, both single family and multifamily, as well as the residential portions of mixed use buildings. And for multifamily, the score is applied at the building level. We're not assessing a individual WRI score for dwelling units or sleeping units. For multifamily, there's no height or size restriction. So any multifamily building, whether it's a duplex or a quad all the way up to like 88 story towers, it's all good. And it's all gonna follow that same process and use the same tools. So a WRI score is based on that zero to 100 scale. And I think scales like this are really easy to understand and consumers get them. You know, like they're already interacting with similar scales, um, you know, for other aspects of their home. So think about walk score, PERS, ERI. Um, so consumers are familiar and they're gonna understand this really quickly and be able to com um, compare one home to another. And then for the builder and his or her design team, I think there's a lot of benefits to going through a process um, that generates a water performance rating. Um, the WRI calculator is very similar to what you heard from Mike. It's Excel based. It's really easy to use. It's really designed to be user friendly. And that calculator provides a lot of important information, um, including not only that preliminary or final WRI score, but also you know, estimates of total indoor and total outdoor water use for an entire year in gallons. And that can be really helpful. You know, in the design phase, a team could use a WRI calculator to evaluate various design choices and understand their impact on the annual water use and the number of points that they might be getting under NGBS or Green Built. And then it's also an important communication tool. You know, we see in many parts of the country, builders are told that they have restrictions on 
um, total water use. And so they need to communicate to their water utilities that the home that they're constructing is only going to use X number of gallons throughout the year. Um, and something like this can be really helpful for a builder to tell their story about how efficient their design is. And also, um, you know, the WRI helps convey total cost of ownership to buyers. Builders can use that WRI score as well as the annual water use estimates to communicate what the anticipated water bills will be and what um, that means in terms of their total monthly expenditure. Um, and especially in parts of the country now where there's really fast increasing um, water utility rates, this is a really important conversation to have and can help somebody feel comforted that they can indeed afford the house that they're viewing. So these are the key components um, that go into the valuation of a WRI. So for indoors, it's all the water using devices, um, toilet, shower, bathtub, faucet, dishwasher, clothes washer. And it also looks at structural waste. Um, that's the water that's wasted um, in part from the hot water delivery system. So think about, you know, you turn on the shower and you let it um, get hot up to your desired temperature before you step in, all that water um, before you step in is what is considered structural waste that we want to account for in the tool. If there's any rainwater, gray water, or black water that's planned to be captured and applied to offset indoor or outdoor uses, that's factored in as well. And then for outdoor, um, we're considering both landscape water use and then non-landscape water use, which includes pools, spas, fountains. So at its core, the WRI score is really simple. It's the sum of all water uses divided by baseline values and multiplied by 100. But there's a lot of like, um, you know, predictive equations that underpin the accounting of those indoor and outdoor water use. So there's a lot of um, complexity in the calculation. But, at, you know, at the core, it's pretty simple. You know, it's, um, water use um, compared to a baseline. So a builder or developer that wants to earn a certified WRI score, they're gonna have to work with a professional that's undergone specialized training on how to complete the scoring and perform the on-site verification for WRI. Um, any NGBS green WRI verifiers, um, those are the folks that have gone through our training and are eligible to perform that that verification and um, guide folks through that process. And these are folks that are able to market their specialized water efficiency expertise, and um, they have some marketing benefits um, accessible through us, including logos, certificates, and listing on our website. So to earn this credential, we expect folks to already have gone through the 2020 NGBS Green Verifier training. Um, and so you might be thinking, ah, I'm already a, like a green built verifier. Why would I go through that pain? Um, we establish this as a prereq, not because we expect you to um, also um, verify NGBS green certifications, although you could, you know, that's just a really key touch point that people have with us when they're getting familiar with our programs. And that's where you're going to learn about our program philosophy and QA and policies and conflict of interest and all that. Um, and so that's why we make it a prereq. Um, that green verifier training is $250. It's all online. If you have existing knowledge from working with other green building programs, it shouldn't be a um, heavy lift to go through that. And then you would access, access the WRI verifier training. And that training earns you two specialized credentials. It earns you the NGBS Green WRI verifier credential, which makes you eligible to work with projects that are seeking that certified WRI score. It also earns you the WaterSense home verifier um, credential as well. And you would access um, some specialized logos through EPA um, based on earning that credential. And then you'd be listed on EPA's website in addition to Home Innovation's website. So the cost of the WRI training is $250 for the training and exam. The training is 
all online. So it's delivered 24 seven on our training platform. The online training components take approximately 2.5 hours to complete in total. And then there is an offline um, scenario exercise where you're gonna be working with a prompt and um, utilizing our tool to get a final answer um, that you'd be submitting for review. And then finally, there's two short comprehension exams to make sure that you understand and know how to apply the information in the training. So this isn't designed to be like a, a gotcha. You know, we wanna make sure that you understand what's being expected in terms of the calculations and on-site verification so that you can apply this um, in the field. So all credit verifiers are searchable on our website and people can filter um, based on location as well as the WRI accreditation in particular. So here's the process. Um, during the planning and design phases, a WRI verifier will meet with the builder or design team to assess the baseline and calculate the preliminary or the design WRI score. During construction, the selected water efficient features will be incorporated into the construction of the home or building. And then at the same time or roughly the same time as the final inspections for Greenbuilt Washington, um, the WRI verifier will go out and he or she will confirm all the water using features that are present. They will um, do tests for leaks and the structural waste um, water and um, all of their on-site verifications will go into the calculation of the final WRI score. That final verification is submitted to Home Innovation for review. And then once we review and feel confident that the you know, score was ultimately earned, everything was complete and accurate, we'll issue a WRI certificate um, to the builder and verifier. So there are a couple of costs that go into any rating or certification. Um, first is the, the hard cost, the sticks and bricks. And that's hard to put a firm um, price quote on because it really varies based on the home or building's design. I would say if you are curious about WRI or WERS, you know, contact a rater or verifier and see where your current building design would stack up, you know, but you might already be earning a 70 or lower based on what you're already doing. And you won't need to make significant changes beyond that, um, that on-site verification with a WERS or WRI verifier. Um, and you would get more points through Greenbuilt Washington. Um, so it's worth a conversation. And in terms of verification fees, the individual WRI verifiers will set their own fees. And those vary based on the local market, as well as how they've structured their service offerings. Um, we know that many verifiers also offer trades training or marketing support, so their, their um, fees will vary. Um, if you're a builder, I would say, you know, reach out to the folks that you're already working with for green, green built or other um, certification programs and have a conversation if they're, to see if they're interested in adding on um, WRI verification as well. If you have an existing relationship with someone, it's better to work with them um, to add on this additional offering rather than going to somebody new. And then finally, the last component is the certification fees. That's what's paid to Home Innovation um, for our QA and certification oversight. And we've kept this really cost effective because we didn't want it to be a barrier um, to add on to additional projects that were already seeking green certification through NGBS Green or Built Green Washington. So this is a flat rate, um, $50 for single family homes and $100 per building for multifamily. So currently only projects that are also seeking NGBS Green certification are eligible to get a certified WRI. However, we've been making efforts to be able to offer WRI as a standalone. So you wouldn't need to also get green certification through us. You could come to us just for the WRI. And um, we've been working with our technology partner to be able to support the back end processing of that 
offering. And so we're looking at early May, 2022 um, as that expected launch date. So I'd say you have about a month. Um, so I'd say, you know, if you're curious about the training, start that now so that you're ready to hit the ground running in early May when we're launched officially with this standalone offering. Or if your builders start having those conversations with your current raters or verifiers um, and set some wheels in motion um, to kind of evaluate your current home design. Um, before I wrap up, I wanted to mention water scent certification as well. I mentioned at the beginning that Home Innovation is a home certification organization through um, EPA's Water Sense Labeled Homes program. And so we're able to help builders kind of maximize their consumer um, you know, appeal by giving them a streamlined opportunity to obtain not only their green certification or their water rating, but also the water sense label as well. Um, you know, we recognize that consumers are way, way, way more familiar with that water sense label than they are of um, WRI or WERS because they've been familiar with that label on their toilets and their shower heads for years and years. And so there's an opportunity to kind of couple these labels together so that they can see that water sense label, it's going to be recognizable to them and it's going to launch some additional questions and conversations about the water efficiency of the property. And in serving as a water sense HCO, we kind of bring our residential construction expertise and that certification expertise and that third party philosophy to, to leverage as well. So we have two pathways that have been approved by EPA, the prescriptive path and the performance path. The performance path is gonna be the only one that's relevant to anyone who's looking to get that certified WRI as a standalone if they're not pursuing NGPS green certification. And so for this path, um, one would need to obtain a WRI of 64 or lower. And that's probably very, um, you know, that's on target with all of what you'd be needing to do for anything four stars or higher on the Built Green program. And then there's some additional um, items that need to be addressed through EPA's mandatory checklist, and then a couple additional landscaping plans. So not a heavy lift um, if you're already getting a WRI score around that 64 or 65 range. It's very little additional effort um, to be able to get that add-on label. So if you want to learn more about this, go to homeinnovation.com slash water scent certification. That's where you're going to find information about the two paths. I will um, provide a disclaimer and say right now the information on the website says that you need to be pursuing um, water sense in conjunction with NGBS green certification. Um, that's going to change when we're able to offer that standalone WRI. Um, but if you get confused or want some added reassurance, um, feel free to reach out to me directly and we can have um, a one-on-one -on -one conversation. Um, and with that, I'll pause for any questions. Anything come in, Nina? Uh, nothing came into the chat. Uh, so I'll just let folks unmute and you can um, turn on your camera as well and um, ask any questions for Cindy. Thank you so much, Cindy. That was, that was awesome. Looks like we just got one in from Sybil. How does WRI and WERS account for projects that have no landscaping as a part of them? Um, so I'll take that first. For WRI, if you don't have any landscaping, you can still get the certified WRI score, but you're gonna have to be doing more in the indoor to account for um, the fact that you can't be claiming any efficiency gains based on you know what's included in the outdoors, um, but it is doable. Yeah, and I'll concur with uh, what Cindy just said there. Um, I guess my question back would be, so if you're not landscaping, that's fine, but then the question would be, what is out there? Um, is this a building with a zero lot line? Um, is it just turf grass? 
is it um, xeriscaping? So we're going to look and see, okay, what exactly is going on out there? Maybe there's uh, efficiency credits that can be earned out there, maybe not. The other thing too, though, is on the reuse side. So if you're um, capturing the water that falls on the site, you don't have any landscaping, let's say, hypothetically speaking, it's just bare dirt, but you're capturing and you're you're funneling that to uh, a catchment basin, uh, bioswale, uh, whatever it is that you're you're trying to do to be able to reuse that water in some way, um, that can be credited. So it, there's a, a lot of nuance, and that's anytime we get to outdoor questions, that's that's the one thing I've certainly learned doing this for eight years now is the indoor part is super easy. It's the outdoor that is so complex. And so uh, I love outdoor questions, don't get me wrong, but man, you can really be going down rabbit holes for answers on some of the outdoor stuff, so. Yeah, so in our particular market, market um, Mike and Cindy, we have a lot of um, projects that are building like custom dad use on their existing properties. And so a lot of the times they're not doing a lot of landscaping because it's just like that one individual like 800 square foot, maybe a thousand square foot dadu. And so there's not a lot of space to do a ton of stuff on the outside. And so how do you then, I think that's sort of the question, you know, or the, the use case that they were trying to get at is not necessarily, you know, it's like there might be a couple feet on either side and it may be next to like a driveway because that's mm -hmm. where it fits on the site. Yeah. So our tool is designed pretty simply. So like, for the outdoor area, you would enter the square feet. And then if there is any kind of turf or landscaping or vegetable garden, you'd enter, you know, the, the amount of square footage that is aligned with that landscape type. Um, but if there's none of those options, you just like leave the whole outdoor section blank and it still generate a WRI score based on what you've entered for indoor. And I'll, I'll just say that um, we've run into this a couple of times with like casitas um, out in New Mexico. Um, so if the, if the main property isn't going for some kind of rating and you're just looking at the uh, accessory building, um, one of the things that we did out there was we kind of looked at, okay, well, what's the overall lot size and try to come up with a ratio of, okay, the main building and it gets this X percent of the lot and then the, the accessory building gets the smaller percentage of the lot. But in that, uh, in that approach, you're, you're still going to pick up a little bit of whatever it is, right? Whether it's turf grass or, or xeriscaping or, or bushes or trees or whatever. So that's that's the way we handled it out in, in New Mexico with a couple of accessory dwelling units. And then one last question um, is WRI new construction only? Yeah, so right now we're only offering WRI for new construction. All right, if there's no other questions, I'll introduce Olga Cano. Um, Olga's with the US EPA WaterSense team, and she's gonna walk us through the WaterSense Labeled Homes version 2.0 program. Uh, yes, uh, thank you so much, Cindy, for that intro, and uh, thank you to Bolt Green for inviting us and having us here today. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, stop my uh, and just present my slides. Um, so uh, I will be uh, taking the opportunity to do a, a little bit more of a deep dive into the Water Sense Label Homes program. Um, I know that Cindy and um, Mike uh, mentioned that the program, um, you know, in, in how we collaborate with them. Uh, so I will take the opportunity to talk a little bit more about the, the technicalities of, uh, of Water Sense Label Homes uh, specific. Um, so just to provide some context as to uh, just for, for the industry in general is, uh, is the, the sort of million dollar question of why water matters to the building industry. 
So as we all know, and for folks that, that have uh, worked in this industry for a while, we know that the cost of water continues to increase. And so water efficiency in the residential sector um, continues to become more and more important as uh, homeowners and uh, just residential water users are looking uh, to save um, money on their bills. It's also part of being a responsible uh, stewards of, of water as our resources. We know that new developments um, can be seen as a sort of, um, uh, in some ways, threats, right, to the, to the existing um, resources that are in a community um, due to their new demand. Um, we also see that, that water uh, is becoming an increasingly important part of the land entitlement process. Uh, and so the availability of water and of service con connections it can at times be the, the um, break or make uh, uh, factor of um, any project. And of course, um, corporate disclosure and reporting, uh, we see that investors are becoming more and more interested and also um, just more engaged in sustainability overall and more willing to, to make investments in um, areas that are uh, being proactive in, in being more um, sustainably responsible. Um, so just a quick outline of what we'll cover today. We'll talk a little bit about HCOs, um, which stands for Home Certification Organizations and the role that they play in the program. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about the water industry and uh, water since labeled homes. Um, then we'll dive into uh, version two, uh, which is the current version that we're running and the technical requirements. And I'll go through a quick example of what um, the version two uh, the Water Sense Label Homes program can look like in practice. So as of now, we have uh, three approved HCOs, uh, that's CHEERS, um, Home Innovation Research Lab, and ResNet. So each of these three HCOs, uh, as part of their application process, have submitted um, what we refer to as a WACM, which is a Water, uh, water Sense Approved Certification Method. And essentially, it's um, the WORS model and the WR model that uh, has been presented to you by both Mike and Cindy, um, uh, those types of uh, rating models are submitted as part of the HCO's application. And then what uh, water sense we do on our end is essentially test that these rating models are um, indeed measuring uh, water efficiency in a way that uh, we can guarantee that there is a 30% efficiency um, threshold uh, to any home that, that receives the water sense um, certification. And I'll explain a little bit more about the 30% of um, threshold later in the presentation. Um, what this allows and has allowed us to do is to open up the program to collaborate with more, with more organizations and really to allow the flexibility for builders to, um, to work with the organizations or the rating systems that work best for them and to add uh, and to try to do with the flexibility uh, and implementing water efficient um, systems and strategies that make the most sense for them regionally, um, depending on where in the country their projects are located. Um, these are the technical requirements for the Water Sense Label Program. So essentially we have a checklist, uh, which uh, for those of you who are familiar with version one, this is a checklist that has been um, uh, simplified from our previous version. Um, so we have this checklist in addition to that 30% um, efficiency threshold that I mentioned. So as part of the checklist, uh, we are looking um, to see that the houses have no leaks uh, throughout. Oh. Uh, so we're looking to see that uh, homes have no leaks throughout um, any visible leaks. Uh, we do a pressure loss test on all the water supplies just to make sure that everything's sealed, uh, that there's no uh, water leakage coming out of any of the, of the junctions or any of the connections throughout the home. Um, no visible leaks for many of the hot water delivery systems um, or anything um, from the toilets or any of the plumbing fixtures uh, in the bathroom. So any of the faucets or shower heads. We also take a close look at um, leaks uh, anywhere in the tub faucets or tub spouts. Uh, throughout, and of course, um, in the kitchen where we have a lot of uh, water using fixtures, such as dishwashers, and of course the kitchen wa uh, the kitchen sink. Um, and then finally, also uh, a, a look at um, the absence of leaks, any other uh, water using appliances, such as 
water heaters, uh, clothes washers, uh, hose bibs, or any irrigation system. So essentially, the, the goal with this is to make sure that any home that is receiving uh, our, our, our certification is not leaking anywhere. Um, and that is always to be the, the expectation. So in addition to the, the, the verification that there are no leaks throughout the home, we also uh, require that all water sensitive homes uh, have uh, plumbing fixtures that are water sense labeled, um, uh, that are water sense home labeled. The reason for this is that uh, the products that are water sense uh, labeled have gone through uh, testing and standardization so that um, consumers can be reassured that they are one, 20% uh, uh, more efficient than standard products, at least, and that they are performing um, also uh, to the same standard or better than the standard product. And so these are all um, uh, characteristics that we find that need to be essential to any home that receives any uh, sort of our certification. And so in addition to these uh, characteristics, we're adding that 30% efficiency uh, threshold. Um, so again, this basically just reiterates uh, the, the importance of the mandatory checklist, which essentially it's really very basic uh, when you're looking at water efficiency, but where we are looking to find more of that complexity and more of that water efficiency and sort of pushing the envelope in residential water efficiency is with, is with 30%. So what the 30% uh, allows us to do is to look at water efficiency uh, strategies and systems in other places uh, throughout the home. So not only just uh, by looking at leaks and at installing um, water sense label products, but also at um, considering uh, irrigation uh, types, plant types, um, landscaping uh, strategies, uh, hot water distribution systems, and uh, strategies of that nature. And so um, what what ends up happening is when uh, we have uh, rating models such as the WERS or the WRI, um, they're looking to um, label these homes and looking to uh, provide a score to these homes based on what strategies and what systems builders and designers are implementing within them um, to, to achieve that 30% threshold. Um, and so how do we measure the threshold? And that's where the, the modeling um, programs come in. And this is a good place to, to sort of uh, pause and, and just reiterate that while water sense, you know, while we do provide a checklist and we do provide sort of a guideline of how to be more water efficient, we really aren't a standalone program. We do um, collaborate with our, our HCOs and the WACMs that they have in place to achieve this 30% uh, requirement. And so Without the without the HCOs, we really wouldn't be achieving this the uh, that thirty percent threshold. And so each HCO is able to present and and be approved with um with a different type of, of rating system. So in the case of home innovations, they're using um, the WRI tool through the NGBS program. Um, Cheers, which is another one of our HCOs, they're using their own implementation of uh, standard eight fifty and uh, ResNet is using uh, Hearst H2O. Uh, as Mike alluded to earlier in the presentation, we're also working with them and hoping um, to have them on board by implementing their, their worst tool. Um, and so what about outdoors? Uh, for any of you who uh, might have been familiar with our previous version, uh, version uh, one, you know that outdoors was, a, um, was one of the requirements that we had specific requirements as to how uh, to implement water efficiency outdoors. So um, what we're doing now in version two is we're really sort of uh, the 30% uh, threshold requirement, really pushing builders um, to sort of wrap that into that 30% and give them the flexibility and, um, and allow them to, to identify which technologies, uh, the landscape sizing, um, reduce the flow rate intensity, uh, to something that makes sense for them, that's most efficient for the home buyers and also for the builders, um, but also pushing the envelope so that they can achieve that 30% threshold. Um, the same happens with hot water distribution. Hot water distribution used to be also a requirement on our um, during our previous version. It is no longer one. However, this is a strategy and a system that can get you closer to that 30% 
um, threshold that is required to be to uh, achieve certification. And so implementing something like this will get you those points through any of the evaluation tools to get that much closer. Um, both Mike and uh, Cindy alluded to this and uh, in terms of the training, certification and reporting, and these are all administrative aspects that um, are handled through our home certification organization. So both uh, through um, Green Builder and through uh, uh, Home Innovation Labs. And so all HCOs offer all the QA that is necessary for a water sense certification. Um, verifiers are all trained under their own training platforms um, and through their programs. Uh, like Cindy mentioned, raters um, are then reported back to us as well as the homes that are certified. Um, and raters uh, then become part of our database search for raiders um, throughout the country and identify um, anyone that might be near them uh, to collaborate with and work with. This is a screenshot of our uh, verifier searchable tool uh, where you can search for verifiers based on name, company, location, and HCO. And this is a, a relatively new tool for us, which we find uh, you know, very handy as, our, as the program continues to expand. Uh, here is a quick um, example of what version two might look like in practice. Um, and of course, this is all in theory. This is not a real project, so please keep that in mind. So we're basically taking a standard, uh, a standard three bedroom, two bath, 2,400 foot um, home on a 10,000 square foot lot. And what we're starting to do is we're starting to incorporate um, different um water efficiency uh strategies to see how the score starts to uh improve uh, depending on what we implement uh, this home in particular is located in san Bernardino, california and so we see that these are the scores that the house has without any real uh strategies uh, water efficient strategies once we implement just the mandatory checklist meaning uh no leaks throughout the home um, and the implementation or yeah, or the installation of water from labeled uh, plumbing products, we see that the score comes down about two points. Um, this is uh, a comparison of our previous uh, uh, um, water sense labeled home certification. This is under version one, which uh, was a prescriptive uh, requirement. And so we see that this drops the home down to, to about 91 points. Um, once we implement the outdoor uh, prescriptive requirements from the previous version, we go a little bit lower to 77. But once we move to version two, we see that we achieve that 30% threshold that we're seeking. And so this is achieved by reducing our irrigated area by 20%, by implementing outdoor irrigation products that are also water sense uh, labeled, um, and by uh, bringing on a professional um, irrigation. Um, uh, an irrigation professional to the site. So what does version two mean for you? Um, well, there's no more uh, hot water distribution requirement, which used to be a challenge. However, we continue to reiterate that this is always a good strategy to, uh, especially for uh, climates that are cold and wet, um, where you might need to do more indoors. Um, it's, a, it's an efficient strategy to help you achieve that 30% threshold. Um, we no longer require the water budget tool, though uh, some of the, um, the, I'm sorry, it's no longer mandatory, but the landscape and irrigation technology can be used to meet that efficiency target as well. Um, some programs, uh, while we don't uh, require the certification irrigation professional, um, some programs do uh, provide points uh, that get you closer to that 30% threshold if you bring someone on board. Um, that's pretty much it from our end. So yeah, if you have any questions, feel free to, to reach out to us. We're always available and willing to provide any technical assistance as, as needed. Um, and uh, yeah, just here to help. And of course, and again, uh, a thank you to Bill Green and to uh, Cindy and Mike for um, all the ongoing collaboration uh, to bring this tool to you all. Thank you, Olga. I don't see any questions in the chat yet, but if folks have some questions for Olga, please uh, feel free to unmute or post them in the chat. And then I'll also, uh, that is the conclusion. So any other questions, water sense or otherwise, uh, this is the, um, the overall Q&A time.
Well, while you might be thinking about questions, I will reiterate, we do have another training coming up on April um, 13th, which is our Embodied Carbon Calculator um, Lunch and Learn, uh, which is featuring the Beam Calculator and the EC3 tool. So we encourage you to attend that as well, um, as well as a uh, post webinar survey we will be sending you um, within the next week that will include the recording of this um, in case you want to rewatch it, as well as a, a survey to let us know um, if this content was helpful and any sort of other content we can help you with in the future. And uh, we did have a question come in from Adam. So it says, um, why did you get rid of direct hot water requirements? Or I think that's what he meant by DHW. Uh, yes, and I'm assuming that question is, is targeted to water sense. Um, we found that um, it, it, it was serving as a, a, a pretty challenging requirement to some of the builders, um, and at times keeping people away from the program. So um, we opted to, to move away from it for that reason, but also um, because in some areas, there's much more water savings to be had in the outdoors. So in hot arid areas, um, we really wanted to encourage folks to, to focus outdoors, look at their irrigation system, um, consider having water sense labeled uh, products outdoors, consider um, their landscaping footprint, uh, their plant typology. Um, and so it's sort of a, a give and take. So while, while we'll still encourage, um, the hot water distribution system as a, as a best as a good practice. Um, it's a, it's not the, the most water efficient strategy in some areas of the country. And if you're using WRI to get your water sense certification, you can still factor in the hot water delivery as part of you know achieving that WRI score, so you know part of the WRI verification involves you know checking that structural waste water amount, and that kind of feeds into your score, which can help you achieve that thirty percent savings for the water sense label. Yeah, and one thing I appreciate about you know the these all of these programs is that they work together. Um, if you do WERS and once they kind of get their, their partnership in line with uh, WaterSense, both WERS and WRI, in the higher um, built green four, you know, four and four, four and five star levels, you can still achieve WaterSense certification. It's just that built green does not allow you to only use WaterSense certification to meet those performance requirements. But it doesn't stop you from getting that additional because obviously you will have met their, their, um, their standards for that. So it's just, it's almost like you can, you know, meet the higher built green standards, but then you can still get water sense as an additive because you've already done the work. Um, so that's a great, um, again, for consumer knowledge um, and understanding, you know, like it's been mentioned, water sense is a brand that people know about and understand. And so you can leverage that as well, even in the higher built green, for, like star levels. Um, well, I'll also pitch some other events while we're waiting for people to maybe have some questions. Um, we also have a um, Housing 2.0 workshop uh, with Sam Rashkin um, focused on optimizing design and uh, for the user experience on May 19th. It is a one day workshop here in our Bellevue um, Master Builders office. Uh, please register for that if you would like to attend and potentially save your projects thousands of dollars. Um, while increasing value for your prospective clients. Um, Nina posted a link in our chat, but you can go to builtgreen.net slash events to register for any events that we have coming up, um, as well as um, visiting our YouTube channel, which hosts all of our back recorded webinars that we've offered for the last probably seven months or so. Um, and that is continually growing as well. So you can subscribe to the Built Green YouTube channel, which you can find through the builtgreen.net website as well. Um, 
And we continue to offer different events, um, including uh, some that you might be familiar with, like our conference that is scheduled in September 15th. So all of that is in our monthly newsletter. If you and you should be signed up for that. Uh, and if not, you can again go to builtgrain.net to subscribe to that. And with that, we'll just wait for a couple more minutes in case there's any lingering questions, um, and then we will wrap up. Thank you. All right, thank you, everyone. Um, Thank you for joining us today and thank you to our speakers who took their time especially coming from the east coast um, to join us and give us all that helpful information thank you thank you all again bye thanks everyone yep